Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Cindy Stark coming in live for my Tuesdays at 10 talk. I took last week off work because it was really what I want to talk about today because my mother had her hip replaced. It was her left hip and she had been suffering eight months, a good eight months. Hopefully she'll come on here on the talk and kind of maybe answer some questions, but she had been suffering for at least eight months with just crippling, crippling gait. It wasn't even any kind of pain. She just looked like as if she was crippled and her hip was like laterally displaced forward and to the, and to the left, she just was not aligned under her body. And after a lot of um, diagnostic workup, we went to this one amazing doctor, Dr. Woodbury in Long Street Clinic where I used to work and he diagnosed her literally with three in within three seconds of looking at her hip films, and um, I'm gonna I meant to bring my phone in here and I forgot to bring my phone in here, but uh, after the surgery was over, I asked the doctor. I said, I know this probably sounds really gross, um, maybe, but is there any way that you could show me what her, you know, her hip like the this is your hip. And this is your femur. And it's supposed to be a nice fluid ball and socket that moves freely within here. And my mom's hip socket here, the ball, it was angry. It was like angry cauliflower. It was like, he said it looked like a, um, a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. And it was just like knocking around like this, you know. And I asked him if he could show me what the actual... Hey Jenny, live from Melbourne, Florida. I asked him if he could please show me after the surgery is over just what her angry ball and socket looked like because I was just madly curious and he showed it to me. And y'all, like I said, I meant to bring my phone in here and I forgot, um, but I will I will put that in the comments. It, it, it might look graphic to some people, but it's just a bone, a very, it's supposed to be smooth as marble and covered in, you know, beautiful cartilage, and it was just angry and all bumpy and knobby. So yeah, as you're coming in live, if you can like type in hashtag live, I would love to know where you're from. And if you're coming in on the replay, if you could just write hashtag replay and let me know where you're from. But again, my name is Dr. Cindy Stark. Uh, I'm a part-time physician at Long Street Clinic in Gainesville, Georgia. And uh, what I do with my life now and my full-time passion is actually bring in a soul connection and a soul-based healing, not just a physical body type of a healing that I used to do for 21 years as a doctor. I now help people heal their whole entire body by healing their subconscious mind and aligning their soul and their spirit, their mind, body, soul in a program that uh, that I created a couple years ago called the Soul Circle Academy. Good morning, Pat. So what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is the origin of disease and really kind of what my life has been like for the last uh, couple of weeks preparing my mom and taking care of my mom. And when, let, let's just start out first things first. I just want to say um, to all you nurses out there and all you uh, radiology technicians and to all you physical therapists and to all of you drug rep workers. Hey, Donna. Donna was one of the best nurses I've ever worked with in my life. Mad props to you guys. When you take care of a patient, you guys do 12-hour shifts. Hey, Sabrina. It's good to see you. And we doctors, we come in sometimes five minutes a day, sometimes 15 minutes a day, you know, at the most probably 40 minutes a day with one individual patient. But what I saw and what I experienced, Michelle's in the house, is that when you're caring for someone who has been your mother, and like, I don't know, I don't know what it, what it, what it would have been like if I was caring for someone else, but it was my mother and she's the one that brought me into this world and she's the one you know just think about everything that your mother has done for you in your life especially when you're old like me at 52 she's done a ton for me in my life and for her to be you know the roles flipped and she is completely incapacitated she uh she cannot walk i have to bathe her i have to feed her i have to ice her wounds i have to remember you know incentive spark hey melissa thank you for being here i love you so much I have to do um, the lung exercises to prevent pneumonia. I have to help make sure she's taking her medicines on time. I have to make sure she's doing the physical therapy exercises, walking five minutes every hour. Well, anyway, what I noticed in taking care of her, and I just really want to share this story with you, and, and I kind of feel like I'm already getting choked up, and so for that, I apologize. I, I hope my message comes through uh, through the the voice distortions that happen when I get really choked up, but 
So right before she went under, I had read that there was a study done in Mayo Clinic that um, people had a lot better pain control after surgeries were over if they would get some Reiki done to the uh, area affected. And this, this particular study was on knee replacement surgeries, okay? And so I only know one Reiki master, and, and her name is Lynn, and she um, did kind of remote Reiki on my mom's hip. And for all of you guys that might not know what that is, we have, a, I call it electricity, she calls it energy, but there's like this energy and this electricity in our bodies that's supposed to go, you know, it's like a closed circuit and it's supposed to go uh, in a certain direction. All the channels are supposed to be open and the energy is supposed to go where it needs to go and the, um, all the trauma and the, and the disease and, and the mismatched electricity is supposed to, you know, kind of rectify itself throughout a day's work. And what happens is, you know, and she, she, it was, it was just such, it was just so, so humbling and such an amazing thing to witness. That doctor who did my mother's x-ray and within two seconds, he said, you need total hip replacement surgery. And she had been going to doctors and physical therapists for literally eight months trying to get a diagnosis and get walking better and just see that confidence. And then to see this energy worker, she was just talking to my mom remotely. She's able to channel in on her energy with however it is that she does it. So she's certified in three or five le uh, levels of Reiki. And if you if you ever, I love you too, Melissa. And if you ever want to have some energy healing work done, um, just DM me and I'll I will uh, connect you guys. But the um, but she could tell within within just channeling within maybe five seconds exactly what had caused. The degeneration that my mom saw in her hip that was necessitating this uh, huge upheaval of her life and six inch incision into her body right and what it was is so there are certain kinds of energies that are stored in your body and i'm going to get into this later I, I have a feeling this is going to go for two different talks just because i have a lot to say to you guys this morning um but like my program works with the subconscious mind and what happens is there are gestalts uh, little bags of different emotions that are um, housing our emotions and um, any kind of negative um, influences that we have in our life and our belief systems and and just all this parental programming and when those are completely full one of two things happen they get if you're, if you're not regulating them often and and through a method that i've gotten certified in that they will just regulate and you will either do one of two things you either revert back to the age you were when it first got full so classic example is road rage where you get so mad and you never ever deal with your anger and then you know you're doing something like driving a car and you think it's appropriate to act like you were the first time you started getting angry which was you know at age two and you start ah, yelling and screaming and, and cussing and not the two-year-olds cuss but you know what i mean um, or you get sick and this is what's happened to my mom okay um you get you, everything gets so full that you're un unable to regulate yourself and you actually succumb to sicknesses that come your way. So in, in your, your left side of your body, you need to think about that as your, your receiving side of your body, your feminine side of your body. And in the right side of your body, I think of it as your masculine side of your body. And that is the giving. Okay. So if all you do is give and 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 mom, if you're on here, Number one, you better say hashtag live. Number two, you know this is true because we've had a lot of hours to discuss this over the last couple of weeks. But no offense to my mom. It's just what we women do sometimes. We give and we give and we give and we give and we don't receive. We don't nurture ourselves. So the fact that she had um, this end stage osteoarthritis, the woman has never had arthritis in her life. She, she doesn't have, you know, osteoporosis in her hips, but, but, through a chain of events that's been going on for like the last eight years of her life, she's gotten herself into a state of affairs, her, her emotions and her energy and lack of healing and full gestalts that she is now suffering on the left side of her body, this feminine side of her body. She's not receiving any kind of help for herself. She's been in the give mode for a long time. Okay. She's been a very busy woman taking care of everybody else except for herself. Can I get, oh, Viva, hi. Oh my goodness, all my favorite, favorite people in the whole wide world are here this morning. So good to see you, Viva. And so anyway, when you are not receiving for yourself and all you're doing is giving for other people, it creates a mismatch of energy in your body. And what happens is because it was her left side, we know through the energy work that it was uh, she what she had been not, not doing is receiving. And because it was specifically on the hip, okay, uh, and I don't claim to know what all these different sides means and all these different joints, but but the energy healer does. 
this was her being inflexible. Okay, so it's like the biggest joint in your body, your hip joint. And, um, and what had happened is she was being inflexible with caring for herself. She knows that she needs to care for herself. This woman used to be the kind of woman who would like eat everything organic. Everything was like, you know, oh, wild grown salmon and olive oil and all these nuts and fruits and all this kind of stuff. And now she's just been kind of the person that she cares for a lot in her life. Uh, she is just um, given, given, given to him and not receiving for herself. So that got um, an energetic misalignment, all right? And it created in my mom's body, like physically. And I wish so bad I would have remembered to bring my phone. But just imagine I'm holding my phone here right now and I'm showing you this really, really angry, completely uneven. It's not no longer a ball and socket. It is just an angry box of just wear and tear and mismatch and everything's not aligned. That created that in her. And it was all because she wasn't caring for herself. That's what started it. That was the original inciting event. And, you know, the... What, um, what, what happens is that that energetic misalignment happens and then your body is trying to shore up, right, on the other side of the body and everything, with every gait, every step you do, you recreate that trauma of what you're not taking care of for yourself. And that's exactly what happens when your gestalts are full and your subconscious mind is if you have this belief system that I'm unworthy, that, that I don't deserve protection, that I don't deserve love, you are going to recreate that in your life over and over and over again. Why? Because everything is so full, all your gestalts are full, and, the, and, and you have a distorted way of looking at your life. And so the only thing that you see are things that are going to recreate that, that myth that you've created in your own life from your own childhood trauma. And so I'm like seeing all of this parallels between my mom and what she's going through and what I teach in my course and what I've like completely given up my, you know, my 21 year career as a physician to bring to the world because I feel so strongly about it, if you can't tell. The same thing's happening in my mom's body and now I'm looking at her and everybody's life is on hold for six weeks now. She didn't do this on purpose. She didn't stop receiving love for herself and making herself a priority on purpose. She just got distracted. She got a new boyfriend. She got a new life. She got divorced from my dad. Uh, one boyfriend died. She has this other awesome boyfriend and they just, she's just not thinking about herself. And that's what happens. And that's what I want to bring to your awareness this morning is that when we are so busy with our 3D life, our body, okay, and you're just, all you're worried about is, excuse me, scheduling and giving food for other people and paying your bills. It's the same thing with me as a doctor. I had you know, 14 hours a day. I was on call of just worrying about all the patients, worrying about taking care of the nurses, worrying about all of my clients, which were the doctors, worrying about all my patients' family. I wasn't able to care for myself and really pay attention to what was in my mind, body, and soul, what was aligned for me, what my gifts and talents are to bring to the world, what my passion was. It's like, I didn't even have the time to think about that, much less organize my life so that I could bring these tools to anybody, right? Because I was so busy on this 3D world. Well, that's what my mom was doing too. And now she has, you know, hello, how many of us have had this happen to us? You don't pay attention to something? Well, something's going to happen in your body to make you pay attention to it. And, and, and now for six weeks, she can't drive. She has um, a six inch incision on her anterior thigh. Hey, Jebba, oh my gosh, I am just like literally going to cry because of all the people that are on my, on this talk this morning. Jebba's dad, it's official. I just got adopted into their family. Uh, the, the papers have been filed in India. Something's coming to me in the mail. I don't understand it. I don't need to know, but I'm now officially Jebba's sister. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so I'm, I'm just thinking that how many of us live our whole lives? So my mom is 76 years old. And I told her, I'm like, mom, listen, you hear what you hear what this energy healer just said to you. If you don't start taking care of yourself, it can start happening to you again on this hip. Your healing won't occur. Yes, rest or you'll be rested. Oh, that is so good. Your healing won't even actually take place. Or what would be worse is you'll have to get it replaced again. Or I think what would even be triply worse is she could have to uh, have to get it um not not get it replaced on another side but that she might have to get another another joint replaced and this has been very disruptive you know she has to give herself a shot in her stomach every single night for an entire year to build that bone back up and so so guess who's taking care of herself now my mom 
And why? Because now she's completely debilitated. She's in a walker. She's on all these medicines, all these prescriptions. She's like so nauseous. She started like throwing up the other day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how much easier would it be if we didn't wait until it got in stage until where our whole life had to end as we know it. And we're like bed bound. I mean, she's like literally bed bound in a, in a, in a sofa. She cannot even move. Yes, Tawana, I love this and I love you. There's another incredible nurse. And hey, Pat, thank you for being here. And so I guess what I'm saying is make yourself a priority before you are in such a place where something terrible has happened. And I'm here to tell you, there are different parts of your body that store emotions from, from different wounds that we, that we give to ourselves. And then and then the doctors will do something to you where you will you will have to completely take care of yourself. And it and it's just not pretty. So one story I wanted to tell y'all, y'all might notice that I have pink hair. <laughs> so my mom is um we're we're in we're in the at every single point of the this six day journey. So she was uh, completely under my care uh, 24 hours a day for the first six days. And I I'm very um uh neurotic. Any of any of you who know me, especially you who work with me. In the hospital know this but I had my Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and and um, and I have every single thing my mother needs to do and it's all it's all delineated and we're checking it off all the different doses of medicines the incentives for our the walking five minutes every hour the yada 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 timing of all the, the times we took it so we know when six hours is up and and I had to um, and, and so these six days is going by pretty slowly and um, I remember the first day, you know, I had to wake up at four in the morning um, to get her there at 530. And, um, you know, just, so we're listening to music. I'm like, Why, mom, what, what kind of music do you want to listen to? And she said, well, I love the 60s. And I said, well, I love the 60s too. And so we take one AirPod each and we listen to the, the top, the top hits of the 1960s. I'm trying to make this fun. I'm trying to nurture her because she can't. She can't take care of herself in this moment, guys. I mean, she's about to get God knows what uh, pumped into her veins, right? Fentanyl and everything, God knows what. And she got an epidural, so she's going to be completely out of it. And uh, and so we're listening to 60s music. Um, I'm getting her all of her favorite food. I'm bathing her. I've never bathed my mom in my life, guys. I mean, seriously, how do you nurses do this? Uh, how do you caregivers do it? I mean, Jenny, yeah, her mother... Um, is at the end stages of her life. I mean, she's 74 years old with end stage Alzheimer's dementia. Again, I think I think something to do with not not caring not caring for herself and and people just stuff negative emotions and they never think that they're worth expressing anything negative. I just think we're taught from a very early age if anything's negative, just oh no, get distracted. Oh, here's you a cookie. Don't feel that. Don't cry. Anyway, get into my pink hair. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. So we are, uh, we watched it, listen to about as much music as we could listen to over, uh, I guess we're on day number four at this point. And, um, and we're watching like amazing movies. I don't know if any of y'all are not, not movies, but, uh, shows on Netflix. I don't know if any of y'all, uh, watched Queer Eye, but there's, uh, Jonathan Van Ness is the hair guy. And my mother's a hairdresser. She, er, she was a hairdresser. She, she's, she needs to be retired. She's 76 years old. And that's another thing. She's going to lay that down so she can stop taking care of other people and start receiving that care for herself. Um, but she is still seeing clients. And so uh, Jonathan Van Ness, the hair guy, he has this whole show. Um, uh, it's like, are bugs gorgeous or gross? Anyway, it's on Netflix. It's, it's really good. So we were watching all that, laughing. But about day number four, we start getting tired of the entertainment we had. So I said, why don't we go dye our hair? You know, I mean, you're a hairdresser. You got the little card. She said, okay, that sounds good. So I'm getting all the little lotions and potions and I'm just having so much fun. I said, I would love, I would love my hair to be pink. I've always, uh, Easter's coming up. So I'm, I'm going to color my hair uh, hottie pink. And uh, mom's like, my boyfriend won't let me do that. And I'm like, what? Do you want to do it? If you want to do it, we'll do it. She's like, I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous about it. I said, okay, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just color your gray. So I, I, we, we did a, a hair party. We colored her hair gray and then I, I made mine, mine pink. And I just said to myself, you know, I am getting in touch with some creativity, um, some fun with paint, you know, even though using my, my hair as, as, as the canvas and, and just, just having some fun, just doing something that's just something I don't normally do. I've never done this before in my life and it's going to wash out. You know, I mean, I did, I did buy the permanent color, so it would last a little bit of time. I didn't want to go to all that trouble and have it not, um, not last, but I, I just made me realize that 
if you become a conduit in your life, right, you're an open vessel, you're, you're bringing stuff in, you're giving stuff out, then these emotions aren't getting trapped in your body. And these energetic alignments aren't happening in your body. And that's exactly how dis-ease happens. It's when your subconscious mind is saying one thing and you know that you need to keep yourself safe, but then your conscious mind is doing things like numbing yourself out. You know, I talk about this sometimes. All the, the salt, sugar, sex, shopping, really. All the things we do to, to numb ourselves out when things are just going crazy in our life and we don't we don't want to really pay attention to what's going on in our lives and so we just keep up with the joneses and we start buying things that we shouldn't buy because we're comparing ourselves to ever um i know jenny uh, uh we're comparing ourselves to everybody on social media you know um I, we're comparing our our backstory to other people's highlight reels Oh, thank you. Expression is a beautiful thing. Your pink says so much. I know one thing and it tells me what my pink says to me is that, and my pink fingernails, is that I love me and 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 I'm in love with myself and, and I'm worthy of love and I can do things. I mean, just this pink, you know, it was a pink moon. It was a full moon um, Saturday night, I believe. And, and it's just all about bringing in what, what serves you and getting rid of what doesn't serve you anymore. And, uh, yeah, wine to chocolate. And and what when you realize that that you're worthy of love and that the only way that you can give to others is to give to yourself first, then everything, everything, everything um, is just a much more beautiful expression of, of, of a clean spirit. So Abby Michael says, oh, he lo she loves Jonathan. Oh, I'm so glad you watch him. And I love you. And I love your sweet giving spirit. Your place in your mom's life has shifted, which is humbling and full of emotion and growth. Sending hugs. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Dis-ease brings disease. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is it kind of dawned on me with just watching my mom. And I, I realized that it's one thing to be diagnosed with, with, with the end stage osteoarthritis and the square peg and the round hole. And it's another thing to go through the hip replacement surgery and all this stuff. Right. But it's another thing to keep that healed state. And so if what we want to do in our lives is to keep this state of healing and they've already found that in, in the, at Mayo Clinic that it was working for people that, 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 were, that were getting their knee replacement surgeries, the people that had Reiki and the people that didn't, the people that had the Reiki um, before and then daily. I mean, it's just a very quick uh, sending of energy. Um, they're, they're, they do so much better post-operatively. I'm just wondering, you know, I, is there something like this that I could offer to all the orthopedic surgeons in, in Longstreet Clinic, you know? Uh, I don't, I don't think any insurance would cover it, but I do believe that people would, would pay for that, you know, uh, to have, I mean, so what if you get your hip replaced if you don't heal from it, right? Or if you get a blood clot or you get an infection and if everything is in there and then you know how to live your life um, going forward and you have someone that's kind of can be your accountability and tell you what kind of things you need to bring to your awareness to make sure that um, your human is getting the love that it needs and that your soul and your spirit are, are in alignment. I mean, that, that would just be the best thing in the world. So I'm going to talk to the orthopedic surgeons. I know probably some of them are a lot more open-minded than others. Um, and you know, it, this is not for everybody, but all I know is that if all we ever do is just, um, focus on, like I said, the 3D world and all the schedules of everyone else and doing and doing and doing for everybody else. And we don't um, really focus on feeling and being. If you are denying those parts of yourself because you just like to either be really, really busy or you like to numb out, then I'm, I'm, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your body will tell you, it will slow you down and it will tell you, and it's not, it's not pretty. And, and I, I, it just, kills me my poor son he, he's 17 and uh, well, I, don't, I shouldn't say my poor son but he was watching my mother in that much pain and she was like just screaming in pain like like really loud moans and and he couldn't hear it and he told me the first day he said mom i don't know if i can stay here i just can't see Gigi like this and i said honey it's okay i said um i said but but you know she really loves you being here and it really helps her it helps her to see her beautiful grandson. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, that's right. Um, so if you if you just don't want to listen to her crying and everything right now, just go upstairs in your room and then uh, and then I'll get her settled and situated. It's just because we just transitioned. Anytime she had to be get up from the sofa, 
down to the dining room table, up from the dining room table, and then back down on the sofa. That was just always the worst. But um, anyway, sure enough, he stayed for three more nights because uh, then he went back to his dad's. But, you know, if we, if we just, if, if we can't handle the bad, right, then we're not, I, I always say that as, as deep as your pain is, that's how high your happiness is going to be. Like you can't even really experience and appreciate the, the beauty and love in your life unless you've had some contrast. It's all about contrast. So anytime something's happening in your life and it's not beautiful or it's not, you know, squeaky clean or whatever, and it's not, j just pay attention to that and, and learn all the lessons that, that's in there. Because once you've learned those lessons and you've let yourself like cry the tears, right, Jenny? Have the, J Jenny is one of my clients and she says that so, um, some of the, I don't know how you say it, Jenny, something about uh, the best exercises you can do someday or the weights that you lift with your, with your eyelids or something because you're crying so much. I don't know. But just cry your tears. Let yourself feel the negative emotions. Learn the lesson and then do better. And, and again, if you want to, if you want to learn more about Reiki and you want to learn about, you know, is there something that, that I, that I could heal in my own self to help make sure that my body is like this beautiful vessel that keeps working as long as it possibly can, then just DM me and I'll, I, and I will, I will, I will give you more information. But, um, um, and on that same note, and I'm going to wrap it up here. I didn't even get through my first page of notes, so I will talk about this the next time that I come in. But next, um, next Tuesday, I have to take my mom to her post-op appointment, and I'm also going to be flying home from a training I'm doing with with uh, my mentor and my coach, Melissa. And so I'm going to be flying in right at 10 o'clock in the morning, and um, and so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be canceling uh, next week's talk. And and I, I want y'all to see that that I am practicing what I preach. I am not a robot. I can't always get in here every single Tuesday at 10. I thought that I could at the beginning, and I pretty much I think I went almost seven months without fail but sometimes things do come up and i need to take care of, of my physical body and watching my mom what she's been going through has made me realize more so than ever that i need to take care of my body more than ever because i don't want to be in this situation 24 years from now but there are i want you to take some time after this talk today and just write down some things that really give you some deep rest whether that is, and you know, some people, especially with women, they think, oh, well, we just need to get pedicures and um, our hair dyed. That's not really all there is. I mean, that's part of it. But if, um, yeah, tears of strength, crying is not weak, it's weight lifting for your eyes. Tears of pain can turn into tears of joy. Ask me how I know. Yeah, Michelle uh, is another one of my clients, and she has gone through so much healing um, from some childhood trauma that she endured that she is uh, bringing her message of hope and healing to, what is it, Michelle? Probably six six department meetings next week um, over at the place where she works, Lanier Park here in Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, Gainesville, Georgia. Might not be called that anymore. But anyway, um, what I'm saying is... Uh, uh, I, what, I, what I want you to do after this talk is over is just think about some activities you can do that give you give your soul um, rest, okay? So for me, I love visiting friends and family. I'm in Chicago this week. I'll, I'll be in Florida at the end of the week. Like, I have to have that connection with people that mean a lot to me. I'm seeing my new sister, Jeva, um, in Texas and in August. And, you know, I that feeds my soul. Now, now if, if visiting with friends wears you out, then don't do that. Do something else. But it might be meditation for you. And then come up with a schedule. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, stick to it like, like, um, you know, hard and fast. But uh, come up with them, some things that you can do daily and some things that you can do weekly and some things that you can do monthly, okay? And, and just love yourself, and put it on your refrigerator and put the list, you know, on your on your bathroom mirror or some things that you're going to see every day. Like, I like to exercise four times a week. I like to drink water eight times a day. I like to get eight hours of sleep. I like to see a new friend every single week. I like to meditate. I like to meditate every single day, but I do it about three or four times a week. Um, good, healthy food at least, at, at, at least twice a day. You know, just come up with whatever it is. And then, and then come up with the things that you're going to do daily and some things that you're going to do weekly and some things that you're going to do monthly. And if you're ready to completely heal from all of your 
any any trauma that you've been through. It doesn't even have to be childhood trauma. It can just be stinking thinking that you find that yourself um, that you're in right now as an adult. And you don't know what, what to do. And you've been going to counselors and you've been reading books and you're not getting anywhere. Then reach out to me too. And we can see if my 12-week transformational program might be a good fit for you. Because there's only two important things. And it's like right now and your willingness to heal. And once you have the time and the willingness to heal, I have the program that will help you live the life that you want to live. So that you don't have to be frustrated so much in your life with where it's going living on groundhog's day when you can come up with a design for your life that's uniquely for you like you need to stop asking other people what's good for you because no one else is you but when you find it for yourself you'll hold on to that healing forever so it'll be my joy and my pleasure to talk to you but i'll see you guys two tuesdays from now not next tuesday i'm taking next week off and i'll see you i think that's the first tuesday in may i can't remember the date at the, at this moment but it was so good so good to see you guys this morning i love you all blessings for health and peace and joy in your life i love you and i'll see you two tuesdays from now have a great day